Hello everyone, I'm back again. In this video, I'm going to be playing another deck with, the, with the, one of the Knights of Thames expansion heroes. And this hero, Jacob Fair, or Fair. Let's see if you can see it. It's, the effect says, in this game, players can't attack. Only, the only cards that can attack, let's just start off. The only cards that can attack in this game are creatures and leaders. So these are the only things that deal damage to your opponent in this game, with the exception of this card. With this card, this hero, it states that you may attack opponent players during your turn as if you are a creature on the battlefield. So remember, remember that creatures, uh, players start the game with the stat points of zero attack points, zero defense points, and, and 27 health points. And when a player plays a, a hero on the board, the stats of that hero, three attack points, for, for example, this one, three attack points, one defense points, gets added to, the, to, 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 to its players. So if, once I play this card, my zero attack points now becomes three attack points, and my zero defense points now becomes one defense points. But I still have 27 health points. So this card lets you, the player, attack opponent players as if you're a creature on the battlefield. So this is, the, this is one of the new cards, the Knights of Tempest expansion. And its other effect states that you may attack creatures anytime that you can attack. You may, you may also attack, you may also choose to attack creatures instead of opponent players as your attack target. In this game, that's also that's another rule that you can't attack creatures. You can only attack opponent players or leaders that are under the control of opponent players that are on on, on on an opponent player side of the battlefield. So this card not only lets you as a player attack, it also lets you attack opponent players and potentially enemy creatures. So it's a pretty good card, and I pretty li I like it a lot. Just you know, it makes it gives the gives your your stat points more. You know, I guess it's just different. It's completely different from most of the other heroes that I have in the game. Most of the other heroes in the game. So I'm I'm gonna test it out. I like it. I've played it a few times because I actually like it a lot. And it's actually not a really bad deck, simply because it has a few um, new crystals from the Knights of Tempest expansion that makes it much easier for you to um, cheat out bigger bigger cards before your opponent. So let's start off the game, and then I'll slowly show you how it plays. So at the start of a turn, well, I guess that, I guess that's, um, that thing is glitching. This screen is glitching, so I'll turn it off. Or I may turn it off or not. So yeah, at the start of a turn, each player starts the deck with, each player puts a basic domain of their choice on the board, or and an identity. This um, identities come in the Knights of Tempest expansion. So you want, if you go online to, to the rdhm.info, the web, the main website of the game. You won't find identities there right now because I haven't released the next expansion yet. I'm taking my time to release it as, you know, I need to build more player base before I start releasing the next expansions. So I'm slowly, I'm slowly working on the next expansion right now, playing with it, you know, as there's really not that much of a demand right now for the game. So there's no point releasing, you know, future expansions when, um, they're releasing that much player base. But in the end, I'll still release it anyways. But I'm just taking my time now since there's really no rush for it. So, you can start off with, each player starts off with a basic domain. That's, a, that's mandatory. So I guess I'll turn off the video capture. 
So each player starts off with a basic domain here or in here, since there are two players playing right now. If there are multiple players, they can be placed. At, the domains can be placed anywhere on the on the board, as long as you have enough room to play cards. Each player has enough room to play um, crystals and, and and heroes, formation cards, and formation cards and um talisman cards and leaders. So there are three rows. Each player must have at least three rows empty for them to play cards. One, two, three. And the domains are placed in the middle row. Identities are, are, aren't mandatory. You can have them on the, on the board or not. But the, you, at the start of the turn, if you want to play an identity, you should let all players know that you have an identity. You don't have to put it on the board right here, but you at least have to let all players know that you have an identity. And you can only use one identity during a game. So if you start again with this ident identity, you can't ch you can't change it to a different one simply because a different one has a different effect. You can only use one per per game. So I'm choosing this identity with this um this deck. Now I've played this deck before. You've probably seen this deck before. It's a. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll talk about it in a minute. Let's see if this this is back again. Nope, it's still not working. So this identity has the simple a two cost effect. So since it has a two cost effect, that two cost means you have to you have to tap two crystals in order to trigger this effect, in order to activate this effect. And the effect states, give a creature plus one attack points or minus one attack points. That's up to you. The second effect that has a five cost states, give a, give a leader plus one defense points or minus one defense point. So it's a relatively easy, you know, simple identity. It may be useful in your deck or not. As long as you have, you're playing a few creatures, it's probably useful. And the identity that I'm using on this side, I haven't created, a, I haven't ordered the sample, the, the cards for it, but I, but I wrote it on a piece of paper. And the identity for this side is, one of them is a two cost identity that states modify a card on the battlefield by six. And what modify it means is, you see how this card has a crystal cost of 16? I can either, when I modify a card, I can either increase the crystal cost of the card while on the battlefield by up to six points. So I can either increase it by a maximum of six, or I can decrease it by a maximum of six. So that's what modify is. It's a simple, it's a simple um effect that gives you that, you know, that lets you, because there's some cards that only target cards of a certain um, crystal cost range. So being able to modify your crystal cost, the crystal cost of cards on the battlefield gives you more freedom of what, you know, it gives you more freedom of when to, how to target cards, with, how to get rid of cards with the removals that you have in your hand. That's what the modify effect is. The other effect that the, the identity has, is a four cost effect that says gain plus one attack points. So, like I said before, players start the game with zero attack points, zero defense points, and twenty-seven health points. With this effect, you can only trigger you can only trigger the effect of an identity once during your turn. Each each effect can be triggered once during your turn. So, as long as I have enough car enough crystals to play this to trigger this effect, I'll be getting one uh, one attack points at this at each turn each of my turns. So it's a pretty useful effect. It has a four four cost, so it's not really that bad of a cost, and it's very useful later on. As I can, sh I'll show you in a few minutes once the game starts. So at the start of the game, each player places places a basic domain on the board, chooses an identity if they want to or not, shuffle their decks.
When he shuffles their decks, I shuffle this. Shuffle, shuffle. And then places it somewhere on the board. I have to shuffle this side. This is pretty much uh, this deck. Every card in this deck you can pretty much buy right now. In the Knights of Themis expansion, I mean, in the, in the right, on the website, sorry, on the on the official website of the game, every card in this deck is available for you to buy. It's a relatively simple deck, relatively po very powerful for what it does, and it's pretty much just like a basic deck that really doesn't have that many, you know. The mechanics aren't too complicated, so it's easy for you to get into. I think. If I'm not mistaken, this deck is one of the starter decks that I have on the on uh, on the website, but it may not be because I've created so many decks that. But I haven't put all the decks that I've created on the website. There are a lot of decks you can create right now just from the cards on the website. But you can I I as a person can only create so much, and I'm also working on you know. There's only so much I can create by myself, so. The whole, the, the entire game is there. It's a world of cards. It's there for you to play. It's there for you to figure out. It's there for you to experiment. There are many options for you. The game gives you a lot of options when it comes to, you know, what when it comes to deck building. So I've shuffled this deck. I draw nine cards. This side draws nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So each player draws nine cards after they shuffle, finish shuffling their deck. Every player have to finish shuffling their deck before players start drawing cards. So I draw nine cards. I have two crystals in this hand right here. I have two one costs, but these are conditional cards and they're spell cards, so they're temporary. I play them, they, they perform a certain action. Then after they finish performing that action, they go into your, your the, the player's mortuary pile. And these these um what I mean by conditional is it the effects pretty much states that before you can play this card, you have to deal you have to deal, to play this card you have to deal damage to. There has to be a creature on the battlefield that has a crystal cost of four or more, because the the effect of this card states. Deal three damage to a creature with a crystal cost of four or more. So if there are no creatures on the battlefield with a crystal cost of four or more, you won't be able to play this card to deal damage. So these two cards are conditional because they're con the the condition is a card on the battle a creature on the battlefield with a crystal cost of four or more. So these two cards aren't aren't bad as removals. So I have three removals in my hand, but I only have two crystal costs two crystals. So I can either keep this hand or I can mulligan, which means shuffle this hand back into my deck and then draw eight cards because I drew nine cards the first time. And then if I still don't like my hand, I, have to, I can shuffle my hand, shuffle, I can mulligan again and shuffle my hand into my deck and draw seven cards instead. I'm going to take this chance, just see what, you know, what, what, what cards I draw during the game. Let's put this here so it makes it easier. And then I'll go to this side. So I draw nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And this side, I have one advanced crystal that has a crystal cost, so I can't play by itself. I have to I have to have resources on the board before I can play this. So I technically don't have any real crystals to play. So I have to shuffle, I have to mulligan again. And then now I draw eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
and I still don't have any crystals. This is bad. So I'll mulligan again. But this time, I'll do it my way. Oops. I'll mulligan again. And this is the card back for all the Knights of Temis expansion. So the Knights of Temis expansion itself has its own card back, like a general card back with all the heroes inside. So these are all the heroes of the Knights of Temis expansion. There are seven heroes. And each hero, each hero's cards has their own card back. So this hero, Jacob Fair, has its own card back. The card backs have no effect in the game. They just, it just, you know, it's just like a flavor, a flavor of, flavor flavor. no. <laughs> it's just pretty much just, uh, it just, just, just little things that just makes the game a bit more fun for me. So now I draw seven cards. I've shuffled it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Do I have any crystals? I only have one. But I have, I, I guess I'll keep this hand. I have a low cost creature. Yeah, I'll keep this hand and then I'll overdraft once the game starts. Let me see if I have any. Yep, I have the hero. That's what I needed. So I need the hero. I need a crystal. And I need another crystal. So to decide who goes first, I'll flip a coin between these two. This side's heads, this side's always tails. This side's always head, this side's always tails. Flip a coin. Okay, so it's heads. That side starts first. Plays a crystal. There's nothing else to play. Ends my turn. This side starts to turn. Get, draws a card. Plays a crystal. Well, taps that crystal to play this one cost, one crystal cost Buren Warrior. Strong, that's uh, that's the creature's title, strong. Next player's turn, draws a card, plays a crystal. There's still nothing to play. Actually, there is one fall. Give a creature plus two attack points, plus three attack points, and minus three health points. I tap this, two crystals, to play this two crystal cost uh, windfall. I give this creature plus two, plus three attack points minus three health points. The health points of the creature goes to zero. When health points of a creature goes to zero or below, the creature dies and must be removed from the battlefield. And this one this one ends as well. There's nothing else to play. And my turn. This player's turn draws a card. Gets a crystal, which is pretty good. Taps those two crystals to play another creature, a two crystal cost creature, strong, Buren Mercenary. That's it. End the turn. This one's turn. Draws a card. Gets a crystal. Untaps everything. Plays the crystal. Now I have three crystals to play cards. And I have a three crystal cost. You're an apprentice, which is also strong. I play it. I tap two crystals to play it. And I end my turn. Now it's this player's turn. Draws a card. And you can see now I have only two crystals. My hand is filled with 
Another car with two crystals. Uh, tell you, tell you the truth. I'm trying to get for this deck. I'm trying to get this card, this hero out as soon as possible. Since unlike this deck, they can pretty much. It doesn't really have the, the hero. It's useful. This deck's hero is useful, but it's not really. It can win the game without it. This deck is more based around the hero. And the hero has an A car. So what I'm trying to do now is rush to get my crystals. Rush to get eight crystals on the board so I can play the hero as soon as possible. Since I didn't draw a crystal this turn, now I'm going to overdraft. So I'm going to draw extra cards. So I'm going to overdraft until I draw a crystal. I'll overdraft one, two, three, four, five. So I overdrafted five cards. That means in my following five turns, I won't be able to draw a card at the start of my turn. So I overdrafted five cards. And the overdraft effect, you can only overdraft when you can draw a card. Like I said it before in, in previous videos, you can only overdraft when you can draw a card at the start of your turn. Since I've already overdrafted five cards, and that's the mechanic, the overdraft is gives you the, the ability to draw cards, extra cards, after you've drawn your first card at the start, at the start of your turn. For each extra card you draw, on your following turns, you won't be able to draw a card at the start of your turn. So that means, since you won't be able to draw a card at the start of your turns, you won't be able to overdraft at those, at, at, um, during those turns either. So it's a pretty useful effect. And these are the cards that I drew. This is the card that I drew. This domain. That means you can, which states you can move a card with a crystal cost of two or lower from a mortuary, a mortuary, not just your mortuary, but a mortuary into your hand, then reduce this crystal cost to zero. It's a six cost card. And then I drew two windfalls and one temple of law and these two domains temple of scorn and temple of law are from the are from the upcoming expansion the knights of themis so how many cards do i have in my hand now one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so I have 11 cards in my hand. I play a crystal. Now I have 10 cards in my hand. Then I tap two to play this card, this creature. Another strong. Okay. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards in my hand. And my turn. You can only have a, nine, a maximum of nine cards in your hand at the start of your turn. I draw a card for this side. Untap everything. And now I have an advanced crystal that has a crystal cost to play it. I tap two crystals to play this. This crystal enters the battlefield in an untapped orientation. Now I have five crystals, five, six. And I can play something else. I tap four. I tap five. Well, four. To play this card. Another Buren. This is Buren Warrior. Strong. But this is, the, this is um the common version. This is the rare. This is a rare card. This also has a rare version. With a high attack point. I mean with a higher defense point. So I played those two cards. I have two crystals left to play cards. There's nothing else. Oh, actually, there is something else for me to play. I tap one crystal, the remaining crystal from this five, to deal two damage to a creature with a crystal cost of four or more. So I deal two damage to my, my own creature, and then I give... I have a wind domain on the board, so I, I choose the wind effect. Because there's a wind, water, and lightning effect on this card. Secondary effect on this card. The primary effect doesn't require a domain on the board. 
but the secondary effects do. That's where the domain comes in. So I deal two damage to a creature with a critical cost of four or more to play this card. So I deal two damage to this one because this card has a crystal cost of four. And then I choose the, the wind domain option because I only have a wind domain on the board, which states give a creature plus one, plus three attack points, minus two, two defense points, minus three health points. Now give this creature minus three health points, plus three, plus three attack points, minus three defense points. This creature dies and I move into my mortuary. Then I attack with this creature. I decide not to block, so I take minus three damage this turn. This side takes minus three damage this turn from its starting 27 health points. So now it's 24, and there's nothing else for me to play. I end my turn. Now it's this player's turn, and it doesn't get to draw a card at the start of a turn because he already overdrafted five cards. So. On the following five turns, you won't be able to draw a card. So now I'll tap everything that I have. And I play this crystal. Crystal of Epiphany. Which states when this crystal enters the battle this crystal enters the battlefield in a tapped orientation. So it enters the battlefield like this. As opposed to this one that enters the battlefield in an untapped orientation. And then it states when this crystal enters the battlefield, summon Three token copies of any basic crystals on your side of the board. On your side of the battlefield. So when I play this, it enters the battlefield tapped. And then I summon three. I'm using these as placeholders. So I summon three basic three token copies of this basic crystals. Of one of these basic crystals. So now I have three, three extra mana crystals to play cards this turn. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. So what I can do is I can either do this Play this. Yeah, I can do that. That's what I'll probably end up doing. And what this is, it's enthralling symphony. Discard your hand, then draw nine cards. That's what it states. Or I can just play a four cost. And get rid of this one. So this will be four. And this will be two. So that, that that's exactly six. And it's pretty hard to decide what I want to what I want to do. Simply because sorry about that. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven crystals. I need eight crystals in order to play my hero next turn. Okay, so I guess what I'll do is I want to play my hero as soon as possible. I'll tap two crystals. To play Windfall and give this creature plus two attack points minus two health points. This creature only has two health points, so it dies. After the minus two health points is deducted from that health point. I put this place this in my mortuary. I also give this creature again plus two attack points minus two health points until the start until the end of my of my next turn. Okay. So this goes on until the end of my next turn. So this creature will have, excuse me, this creature will have 
plus four plus two attack points. So we'll have five attack points now. So this creature will have five attack points and one health point. So I tap another two to give this creature plus two attack points minus two health points. And then the remaining three that I have, the many two that I have, not three, two. I tap, I tap all two of them. To play Enthralling Symphony. Which states, discard my hand. Then draw nine cards. And it's, it's other, um, it's secondary effects. Which I, ha I have a water domain on board. So I can only choose the water domain. It says, move up to two cards from your mortuary to the top of your deck. So, I don't think I had it. Oh, I have this one. So I can move this one to the top of my deck so I can have a creature. That's the only card that I had. I guess I won't. So I choose not to use that effect. So I discard my hand. Actually, no, so I had, I had these. Oops. So discard my hand. These are the, this, these are the only cards that I have my, in my, on the board before, right? These two, and then this. This creature. Yeah. So you you get to choose which um which effect to do first. So I, first I I can either discard my hand first, then draw nine cards, or I can move the top two cards from my mortuary into, to the top of my deck before I discard my hand and draw nine cards. So right now, I don't know if I want to actually move cards to the top of my deck. Or just discard my hand and draw nine cards. I may need creatures, so hmm. I guess I'll just discard my hand and draw nine cards. And I won't use the secondary effect of this card. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I still don't have any crystals. So this is not good at all. But I have creatures though. So it's also not bad. So I have nothing else to play. I end my turn. Now it's this player's turn. It draws a card. Now I can now I can play my um hero. This I can play the hero. Five, six, seven. Play the hero. And now every creature I play against quick. But I have no creatures on the board. So I play I tap one to play windbreak. This is the hero. Let you know. And it states whenever a creature you control attacks, it gains plus two health points or plus two HP until the end of turn. And creatures you play gain quick. So I tap one crystal after playing the hero to play Windbreak, slant two. So I'm slant one. Slant slant at one. Look at the top card of my deck. I can place it at the top or back or, or at the bottom of my deck in, in any order. I decide to place that at the bottom of my deck. This one ends. I have nothing else to play. I attack with this creature. This creature had one attack point before. Now I gain another now again plus two attack points. Now it has back now it goes back to three attack three health points. Sorry about that. Now it has three health points the moment it attacks. I don't want to block. So I take three plus one, two, five damage. So 24 minus five is 19. 
And that's it for this side. As this player's turn, they still can't draw a card. Untaps everything. Excuse me. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I tap three crystals. Okay, now I tap five crystals. Three. One, two, three, four, five. Um, maybe not. Let me tap three. Let me tap four crystals instead. So one, two, three, four. To play these two creatures, this one and this one. I have three crystals left to play. There's really nothing much left for me to play. Hmm. I guess I messed up somewhere. Yeah, I did mess up. But it's okay. I have three crystals. And I end my turn. Now it's this player's turn. Untaps everything. And then draws a card. That's a crystal, but now, I, now that I have my hero on the board, I want creature. So I'll overdraft one, two, three, four, five. I'll overdraft five as well on this side. Play crystal. And I have five, six, seven crystals left to play cards. I have one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight cards in my hand. I have five, six, seven crystals to play cards. So I tap two crystals to play this. Viewing Mercenary, Prophet, which says Wall Cry, draw two cards. So I play it and I draw two cards. Then I tap three crystals. I tap five, but I'm using three of those five crystals to play this card. Viewing Apprentice, strong. This is the common version, as you can see. Look at the stat points at the bottom. Three, two. This is the rare version. The stat points of three, three. I have two crystals left to play cards. Excuse me. I tap those two crystals to trigger this effect, this two cost effect. Give a creature plus one attack points or minus one attack points. Now, which creature should I give plus one attack points or minus one attack point? All creatures can attack this turn. So I decide to give this one plus one attack point, then all of them attack. Now I can choose to block. Because of this hero, now this creature has, because it attacked, now it has plus five, now it has five attack, five defense, five health points. This creature has three health points, and this creature has four health points. Because they gain two health points when they attack until the end of turn. Then they're removed. So this creature has five health points and it deals four damage. So I can block it with these two or 
This creature has four attack points. Four health points, zero attack points. Now I'll block these two. And then I'll block this one. So these two block this one, this creature, while this one blocks this one. So that's one, two, three, three attack points plus two attack points is deducted, will be deducted from this creature's five health points. And this creature's three attack points can be deducted from this creature's three, three health points or this creature's one defense points and two health points. Since this, this creature has a higher um, attack point, I'll deduct the three um, attack points from this creature's two health, three health points. This creature dies. And there's no more attack points for me to deduct anymore because all three attack points have been deducted from this creature's three health points. So this creature survives. This creature dies because it was dealt five damage from these two um, cards. And nothing happens here because this creature deals two damage to it, but it has one, two, three, four. It has four effective health. This creature has two health, but this creature only deals one damage. So everything works out fine. And this creature attacks me, and I take three damage, minus three. So this side now has 19 minus three health. I think that's 15. Or no, that's 16. So now this side has 16 health. This side still has 27. And that's it. Turn ends. Now it's this side's turn. You still can't draw a card. So I'll tap five. One, two, three, four, five. To play this. Viewing Commander, strong. And I still have three crystals to play cards right now. And what I'll do is I'll tap those two crystals to modify this creature by six. So this creature now will have, instead of a five crystal cost, it'll have a zero crystal cost. So I re I, I'm, I'm reducing this, the, this creature's crystal cost to zero. And the reason I'm doing that is to play, play around this card. This, this card that states, deal three damage to a creature with a crystal cost of four or more. Now that I don't have any card with this, if I didn't, if I didn't uh, modify this card, then this creature, this card will be able to kill it next turn. But now that I modified it to z to a crystal cost of zero, this card won't have any more targets, you know, to play it. So I end my turn because I don't want to attack. There's no point in attacking right now. And then it's this player's turn. This player mulligan, I mean, overdrafted last turn. So it can't draw a card at the start of the turn. I untap everything that I have that is tapped. And then I play a crystal. I tap three. One, two, three. I tap four, but I use th three of those fours to play this um, Fog Forest, which states draw a card. So I draw a card. I tap three. The one extra crystal from the first one that I tapped, plus these two, to play this um, um, leader, Burian Warrior. When you first, when you play it, when you play your first creature each turn, that's the effect of this card. When you play your first creature each turn, give a leader or creature you control plus two attack points until the end of turn. So I play it. Now I have five, six, seven um, crystals to play cards again. 
I tap two crystals to play Area's Grace, which states, expose the top five cards of your deck, and I'm going to choose one of the abilities. There's a lightning ability, a wind ability, and a water ability that corresponds with a lightning domain, that correspond with a lightning keyword domain, a wind keyword domain, and a water keyword domain. So as long as I have a, a, a lightning, wind, or water domain on the board, I can choose a lightning, wind, or water effect here. So I play it, and I expose the top five cards of my deck. One, two, three, four, five. And expose just simply means show it to all players. So these are the top five cards of my deck. And I'm going to choose the wind effect, which states you may add up to one creature card to your hand, then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So I'll take this card, add it to my hand, then place the rest at the bottom of my deck in any order. Oops. And then once that's done, I place this in my mortuary. And then now I can either, I have five crystals left. Now I can either play this card or yeah, I'll play this card. I tap five to play Buren Commander and I draw two cards, which states Warcry, draw two cards. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven cards in my hand. And they can all attack right now, except this one, because this is a leader. This says creatures you play gain quick. This is a leader, so it doesn't get that effect. This creature has quick. This creature has, I think I played this before that. So it won't have quick because I didn't play it when I played this um, hero. Or maybe I did. I, d I don't remember. So this creature gains quick. So it can attack the turn it is played. If a creature doesn't have quick, it can't attack the turn it is played. It can only attack the following turn. So during my turn, if I play this if I play if I play this creature this turn, if it doesn't have quick, I have to wait until my next turn before I can play it, before I, before I can attack with it. But it does have quick, so attack, attack, attack. And since this is the first creature that I played this turn, this leader's effect tr um, triggers or activates. So it states, when you first play a creature each turn, give a leader or a creature you control plus two attack points until the end of turn. So which one should I give plus two attack points until the end of turn? I give this creature plus two attack points until the end of turn, and all of them attack. So this creature has three attack points, this creature has three attack points, this creature has three attack points. These two block this one, and this one blocks this one. So I take minus three damage. So this side takes minus three damage. And now 16 minus three, 13. And this creature, these two creatures together with, with, with the AP of two attack points and two attack points, now deal, is dealing four attack points to this creature. This creature has two health points and three attack points. So the two, the two health points will be deduct, deducted from the four. It has four health points actually, because it has two health points from, it has two he base health points stated on the card. It also gains two health points from this hero. So now four attack points minus two health points is zero. So this creature dies and this creature deals its three attack points. It can either deal three attack points to this, this creature, then this creature, or deal three attack points to this creature, then this creature. This creature has one defense point and two health points. So this creature will be, more, will be harder to kill than this creature. So I'll, I'll get rid of this creature first. So I'll deal three attack points to this creature. This creature dies. And since I've already dealt three attack points to this creature, there'll be zero attack points dealt to this creature because it's already been deducted. This creature's two attack points has already been deducted from this card. 
which has one defense points and two health points. This creature dies. This creature dies. And that ends my t this player's that player's turn. Now it's this player's side. I still can't draw a card because I still have one more turn, one more turn to go before I can draw a card at the start of my turn because of the overdraft. And then So what I can do now is I have seven crystals to play cards. Hmm. And let me make sure for let me make sure this effect is actually correct. Now what I'm the effect I'm talking about is is this one, which states um. You give two creatures, two enemy creatures, enemy leaders or opponent players weak in one. And the weak in one effect is what I'm trying to figure out just to make sure I'm, I have it right. Okay, I guess that's not where it is. There you go. There we go. Okay. So yes, I can I can actually do that then. So we can want I'll I'll, I'll tap four crystals to play Temple of Law. So it states give two creature enemy creatures, enemy leaders, or opponent players we can want. So I play it, I give this creature weakened one. So what we weakened one means is anytime this anytime a card that has weakened one or any any number, we let, let's say weakened X, that player when that player takes any form of damage, they take X more damage. So since this uh, I'm giving this creature weakened one, and I'm giving the opponent player. Another weakened one, or oh, maybe not. Maybe I shouldn't give the player weakened one. Okay, I'll, I'll give this. Um, this no, I'll, I'll give the opponent player weakened one. So the opponent player has weakened one. This creature has weakened one. That means when this creature takes damage, each time this creature takes damage, it'll take one more damage. So if I deal four damage to this creature, it'll it, it'll deal five damage instead. When I deal four damage to an opponent player, it'll deal five damage instead. So that's what weakened one is. So I tap four to play that. Then I tap two to give this creature plus two attack points and minus three minus two health points. And since this creature has weakened one, I'm dealing I'm giving it minus three health points instead. So this creature dies, goes into his player's mortuary, and that's I attack with this creature. And this leader dies as well because it has two defense points, two health points. This creature has four attack points. The defense points are deducted from the attack points before the health points is deducted from the attack points. So four attack points minus two health points minus two defense points is two attack points. Two attack points minus two health points is zero attack points. When it when it's when the, I mean zero um health points. When the health points of a card, a creature, or a leader goes to zero or or, or below. It dies. So I have nothing else to play. I end my turn. Oops. I end my turn. Now it's this player's turn. I can't draw a card. It's overdrafted. Untap everything. Play a crystal, tap four. To play this, um, Buren Prophet. Draw a card. Draw two cards. One, two. That's weird. No, I guess it's not.
and I have five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten crystals to play cards right now. I tap three of those crystals to play these two cards. Strong. Beer Warrior, strong. Now I have five crystals left. I tap one crystal to play Call the Wind. Oh no, before I do that, I guess I should attack first, right? So let me just plan this out. Three before I tap anything, right? Five, six, seven, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I guess I can actually do it. So I'll tap three to play Fog Forest again. And every ad advanced domain you play replaces the advanced domain that you already have on the board. So I'll tap three to play this. And when the card is replaced, it is placed into its place mortuary. And I draw a card. So I have four mana left. I tap two. I, I use the remaining two manas from this card. Excuse me. To give a creature plus, plus one attack point. So this creature has plus one attack point. So that's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then all of them attack. And I decide not to block at all. So I take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I take eight damage this turn. So 13 minus eight. That's five. So this I have five health left. And then I, I tap one of these crystals to play Call the Wind, which states deal three damage to a creature with a crystal cost of three or more. That's this one. Then give a creature plus three, plus four attack points, minus three defense points, and minus four health points, which is this creature. I give this creature minus three um, health points, minus four health points, and the creature dies. This is moved into my mortuary. And that's it. That ends this one's turn. Now it's this side's turn. I only have five health left. And I could be dead at any point in time. So what I do is, what I'll do is, I'll tap one to play Accenting Wind, which states, you gain plus four attack points until the start of your next turn. And I choose the lightning effect because I only have a lightning. The domain that I have only has, this card has a, a, a wind secondary effect, a lightning secondary effect, and a water secondary effect. And the domain I have on the board only, ha only meets the water requirement. I mean, only meets the lightning requirement because this domain only has, has a lightning, lightning fire subtype. So I can only choose the lightning um, option, which states um, the lightning um, effect states you gain pacifier until the start of your next turn. And what pacifier means is that while you have pacifier, when you're attacked or when you're blocked, each time you're blocked by a creature or a card, those cards take get gain minus one attack point until the end of turn. So I play this card. I tap one to play that card. Now I have plus four attack points onto the start of my next turn. This I have plus four attack points on the start of my next turn. And now I tap four crystals to activate my um, identity, which states gain plus one, plus one attack points permanently. So now I have a plus one attack points plus the plus four attack points. Now I have five. So on to the start of my next turn, I'll have five attack points. So one, two, three, four, five. I have two crystals left. There's nothing else for me to play. I end my turn. Now it's this player's turn. I 
tab three. Crystals to draw a card. And I tap four to play this card. And then all of them, oh yeah, and then I tap two crystals to give a creature plus one attack point. And what creature should I, which creature should I give plus one attack point? I give this creature plus one attack points. Now this creature has three attack points. This creature has two, two, three. They all attack. I block this creature. Then I take one. Uh, this creature has three attack points. This creature has two attack points. This creature has two attack points. But because I have pacifier, this opponent player has pacifier. Each of them gets gains minus one attack point. So they lose one attack point until the end of turn. So now this creature is dealing two damage. This creature is dealing one damage. This creature is dealing one damage. So Together, I'm taking one, two, three, four, minus four damage. So five minus four is one. So I have one health left. This creature dies because it has two health, while this creature has three attack points. Sorry, this creature has three attack points. And now it's the start of my turn. Well, I guess this player ends, its, ends their turn. Now it's the start of my turn. Now I I'm going back. This one's this one is already done last turn, but I just left it here so you can that, that that way I can you know keep track. This one ends. Now I can actually draw a card since my overdraft is already over. I draw a card. I've already overdrafted five. Now I want to overdraft four more because you can only overdraft a maximum of nine cards during a game. So I drew a card, now I'm gonna overdraft four. One, two, three, four. And I still don't have any crystals. So I still can't play any, that's weird. This deck should be filled with crystals. But I guess I don't have any crystals. So I'm gonna lose anyways. So what I'm gonna do is, I'll tap six, one, two, three, four, five, six, to play Temple of Scorn. Which states, move a card, move a two crystal cost card on the, on the, in a, in a, in a mortuary, any mortuary. Two crystal cost card or lower in any mortuary into your hand. Oh yeah, I forgot, I dealt, I dealt five damage to th these creatures. This creature has five health, this creature has four health. This creature has four health. So I get rid of this one. This one dies. And there's really not much for me to do. So I guess that's this side is pretty much just done. And that's it for this game. Because this side already lost by default. I guess it's not by default. So I was going to play that. Then I'll go, I'm going to get this this card, which has a one crystal cost. While this one says, move a card with a crystal cost of two or lower from a mortuary, any mortuary, into your hand. I was just going to do play two of these. And then maybe kill all the creatures. But things didn't work out the way I thought it will on this side. And this side, this deck is actually pretty strong because it can attack the same turn it is played. Once you have your hero on the board. So this, this deck has strong early game and strong late game. While this deck is more based around the hero itself. And since, as you can see, I couldn't play the hero this, this, this game. So I couldn't play this hero this game. The deck just isn't working out because you really need the hero before you can attack. And the hero also has three attack points. And and there's an effect that gives that you know the identity that also gives you plus one attack points makes it much easier for you to play the hero because you'll be you'll be able to attack every turn. And you can also attack creatures. So when the opponent plays a bunch of creatures, 
you can attack the creatures and get rid of them. So that's so it's it's another form of removal, because now you can actually remove the creatures and you can attack the opponent player. So this card is very powerful once you can have it on the board, but since the deck is based around the card and I can't I, and I couldn't play the card this turn, naturally the deck will lose. But that's usually how it is with games. I mean, with card games that have it, you know, that have a draw mechanic, a random draw mechanic like this. It's pretty fun. I really wanted this card to win, this deck to win, but it didn't end up the way I thought it, you know, the way I wanted it to. But that's that's still good. I'll probably put another. I'll probably upload another video showing you how the get the deck plays. And hopefully we can get one where I can play the the hero. So that's it for this video. See you next time.